It's fast. It's faster than the Super Hornet, I think. It's a lethal, relevant strike fighter. It has been for decades. It's been the backbone of naval aviation since 1983, when the Marines first took delivery of the first fleet aircraft. And it's just a good looking airplane, which is why the Blue Angels flew it for decades. And it was the face of naval aviation uh, for generations. When you take off in that, when you're used to kind of a fully loaded Super Hornet performance and you take off in that, <laughs> and if anybody has been to a drag race like that and feel the adrenaline when one of them cars goes by, that's how I felt when I first saw this in the sky. It was awe striking. I, I don't know how else to put it. What made it unique was that it was a multi-rolled aircraft, so both a, a strike platform, so an attack platform, and a fighter platform all in one. And many people didn't think that you could design a airplane that would be good enough at either of those two missions. So they felt like there would be compromise somewhere in order to have a multi-rolled fighter. So you know, the, the knock on the F-18 coming in was, wasn't fast enough to be a fighter, didn't carry enough ordnance to be an effective uh, bomber, and replaced those aircraft that they replaced. And I would say history has proven otherwise. This is probably one of the first ones from the onset that was born at Nav Air to be a strike fighter, not just a strike mission, not just a fighter mission. We're trying to put both roles together and going back to the idea of being an easy switch from one mission to the next, it's a push of a button. And that kind of helped inform the next generation of flying in the F-35 and now next gen, where we can become more of a multi-mission platform that can be put into a various scenarios and have the pilots take care of business when called upon. I think one of the biggest legacies is we went from specialized aircraft to multi-role strike fighter. Um, this community is different. I, I still had F-14 transition folks in my ready room um, as a Super Hornet aviator. And what the Hornet community came on, online to do and still does is uh, that kind of jack of all trades. We do it all. You can do everything in the F-18 type model series. You can be a fighter, you can be a striker. We do close air support missions. Obviously we fly around the aircraft carrier. Um, we support rescue missions. We support air to air defense of the carrier. We support offensive air to air. Um, the, just about every mission you can think of for a fighter attack aircraft, that aircraft can do. But it really was a sea change in how we set up our carrier air wing, where we went from multiple aircraft that were specially designed for a particular capability to a multi-role strike fighter. And that is what we are seeing carried on in the joint strike fighter as well. We went from A7s and A6s and EA6s and F14s covering the flight deck of the aircraft carrier. And now the flight deck is covered by Super Hornets and we're going to start phasing joint strike fighter into that. Hornet has been the backbone of aviation for decades. It was cutting edge when it was first introduced to the fleet and technology doesn't stand still. We have to continue to advance. And so that is exactly what we're doing. We are putting cutting edge technology into our aging platforms to make sure that our Marines that are going forward to uh, the pointy end of the spear are equipped with the best technology that we can put in our aircraft to make sure that they remain lethal and survival and relevant to support the warfighter on the ground. The most rewarding missions I had in Iraq were the ones where we were able to help locate the high value asset to keep our folks safe on the ground. We want to make sure that when a male, female, son, daughter, whatever pilot climbs in this, they're going to come back home with it. So the Super Hornet aircraft really came into its own, I think, in 2006 timeframe with the uh, development and the introduction through the, uh, the advanced crew station, the special missionized aft seat in the Super Hornet, as well as the introduction of the joint helmet mounted queuing system for the WIZO, and allowed the WIZO pilot team to be much more effective in combination with those systems along with the APG-79 AESA radar. A Super Hornet is more of a workhorse. It's uh... The, the Super Hornet is a beefy aircraft. It's got more gas, it can carry way more stores, and so you can fully load it out with a lot more ordnance, and it's got a lot more food, so 
when you see him, it's just a figure. Legacy Hornet is mostly in the sustainment phase right now. Super Hornet, we're sustaining that platform, but lots of development work going on because that's still the workhorse of, uh, of the carrier air wings for naval aviation, uh, as well as Growler. So uh, Growler is really in its, in its heyday as the, uh, the only tactical EW platform that the DOD has. So they took two proven systems, the ALQ-218 tactical jamming system and the uh, uh, F-18F Super Hornet and put them together uh, to form the EA-18G Growler. Uh, it is the country's uh, only tactical jamming platform and provides uh, electronic warfare support to the uh, warfighter to include the uh, Super Hornet. We provide uh, suppression of enemy air defenses, uh, primarily surface-to-air missile sites, uh, as also, and also uh, perform comm jamming uh, to uh, support the warfighter. I think another thing is an enormous growth in foreign military partners, which is another thing we're seeing carried forward with JSF, um, where we have seven international partners who fly Hornet and Super Hornet and Growler now, uh, and that's been an enormous force multiplier for us and for our allies, where we can truly be an international partnership. We have several of our FMS partners that are looking to fly Hornet into the 2030s and some even beyond. So some are just looking at doing uh, service life overhauls like we're doing right now on our Super Hornet to extend it. They're looking at um, doing the engineering analysis to see if they can extend the life of their legacy hornets even further. So it's kind of an unknown right now of when the last legacy hornet may um, stop flying. I mean, the PMA is critical. This is the back end of the entire enterprise that allows that strike fighter to launch off an aircraft carrier and go do a mission. So when we are flying operationally, when we're out on deployment, when we're flying the aircraft, we talk about being on the pointy end of the spear to, to launch that aircraft into combat. You got to deploy the aircraft carrier, get it all the way overseas to where it's going to go. And then the aircraft has to fly those last few hundred miles and go do what it's going to do in combat. The PMA is even before the aircraft carrier deploys, we're there making sure the aircraft is supported, making sure the aircraft is legal, making sure it's survivable, making sure it's got everything it needs to go be effective in combat. And then we're there through that whole deployment too. Um, we take calls from folks on deployment all the time on things they're seeing, things we need to fix, things we need to work on. And um, the, the, the aircraft wouldn't be there and wouldn't be able to do the things that it can do without the PMA. Certainly a, a huge legacy in the F-18 program with multivariants spanning now 45 years since first flight. So uh, an amazing record uh, that the countless numbers of people that worked on both the program, but then have also been a part of this airplane. So from the, the sailors that maintain it, the pilots that have flown some variant of it, the, the multiple uh, combat operations that, that this platform seen uh, over the, the decades that it's been in service has been, uh, been amazing. So it's amazing to be a part of it, humbling to be uh, at the helm of uh, PMA 265 as we move into uh, the second half of the century of this platform still being in service. The Hornet has had quite a bit of life and still has life left in it and serving, serving our nation's forces. And so legendary may be a better term than legacy. It still remains a great aircraft for close air support and supporting troops in combat. End of an era for the Navy, but uh, still supporting both the Marine Corps and our FMS partners as well too. So seven countries out there as well that continue to fly the legacy. So there's still a, a huge role in the program office to sustain that platform. And not only sustain that platform, but make sure that we can upgrade it to make sure that it's uh, lethal and survivable for our pilots who are still flying in combat missions. Our Marines overseas are there as part of our national projection of power to ensure the security of our interests and our allies' interests overseas. The Hornet, it's carrying cutting edge technology to ensure our air superiority. They're there to support the units on the ground and make sure that the skies are clear. I think based on the resiliency and the, and the planning factors that PMA 265 has put into place for sustainment, it's gonna continue that strike fighter mission through 2030 and potentially beyond depending on the Marine Corps' plans. But as far as meeting the mission and the requirements, it's only limited by the stuff that we can put on it for weapons and everything, but the platform is still gonna be solid. 
from build process to what it does out there, you know, what, what it's built to do, they have modeled off of a lot of that. And uh, it's just amazing. It's got amazing capability. It's really amazing.